All right, as we're talking about here, we were dealing specifically with uh, changing the path. So what we're going to do is we're going to first collect click on frame one which is true and then as I move my mouse pointer up here you'll notice as I move it here I get a straight left right corner what that allows me to do is that allows me to change the actual beginning then what happens if I actually want to change the path itself I can move my mouse pointer directly off that and you'll notice it'll turn from a right angle to a uh, a circular uh, what do they actually call that there an arc don't ask me why. So I can actually move along these, these lines and I can change my actual motion path. As I change my motion path, I can push enter. That gives me an idea. I can stop it, enter, stop, enter, stop. And then I can actually use my plus, excuse me, my comma and my period to move back and forth as well. And if I, if I choose to do so, I can use edit and I can undo my run, right, which is my last. But like any undo, I can control Z. To undo my elements to get me all the way back to an actual straight line. So, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to change the transparency of an object. So, I want to first make sure I have my object selected, which I do. And then I want to go over to my properties tab, and then I want to choose color effect. So, here's my color effect right here. Then I want to go ahead and choose alpha. So, here's my down drop arrow. I choose alpha. And then what I have is an alpha slider, and I'm on 1-26 uh, number 4. Do you see where it says number 4, drag the alpha slider to 0? So I grab my alpha slider, and what's going to happen is you'll notice as I drag this and I drag it to my left, you'll notice that particular object gets clear or transparent. So I can actually start it off being totally blank, and then what it does is if I move all the way to frame 50, it's still that way. So now I've made it totally disappear throughout my entire thing. Now what I can do is I can click for frame 48 on the player or the very last one. So I want to click my very last one. And I want to drag my alpha slider, meaning that, um, so my ease, my path, okay. Let's see, here's my object, right? There we go. And I want to grab my alpha slider, and I want to put it back to 100%. So what should happen is, at the very beginning, it'll start as disappear, and then gradually over time, it'll get more solid. So I'm actually changing the transparency so it goes from blank or uh, unable to be seen to something that can be seen. Now I'm on 1-26, and I'm going to work on actually resizing an object. So I'm going to click back on frame 1. There we are to start it. And we, we already did the white area, so we have this selected. And I want to click my position and size element. So my position and size. So I'm going to click on back here. So you'll notice that my properties change different or change. And I want to do position and size. And I want to review the W width and height setting of the object. And this, the width, width, and the height represent the size of the object. And then if I take a look at frame 48, which is my last frame here, you notice I have a width and a height, excuse me, if I click back on this object, I've got my width and a height, which is the same, it's exactly the same. We want to verify the, like, the lock icon in the properties panel is not broken. So this right here, do you see where that lock is broken? So I want to lock the width and height together. That means that they will scale appropriately and stay together. So on number six, Flash 1-26, verify the lock icon in the properties panel is not broken. Now what I want to do is I want to take my mouse pointer, and it looks like point to the number next to W, and when the pointer changes double head, I want to make it where it's similar to figure 26. So basically, if I'm on my first frame, right, and uh, the alpha is, it looks like your first frame, they've changed their alpha to 100%. So here's my 100%. And then I want to change the height and the width to, let's see, click the circle object on the save, play the movie, test the movie, and close it. Frame one selected, drag the alpha slider one. Okay, so basically what's going on is what you can see how this works. Let's say the width and the height start out small here in the very first one. Now, it doesn't specifically say this, but this gives you an example. Whereas I can go to 50, you'll notice that if I do this, I want to 
make sure it's larger toward the end. So let's see if we can't. There we go. Now what will happen is if I'm on this and I play it, you'll notice as it gets over here, it gets bigger. So if I click on here, number one, I could actually come along, make sure I select the object, and then I want to change the slider. So now when I actually push it, not only do I have it appearing, I have it growing in size as it moves across the stage. I can also do things like, okay, now I want to change the motion path so I can start combining things and layering things. Now I've got it moving and I've got it growing in size. And if if I'm at the very end and I actually increase the width even more so, what will happen as I move across my stage, it'll go from very, very small to very, very large. So you have a way to manipulate the different objects and manipulate the size of things as it goes through. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, it says verify the object is selected, right? So I selected my object. Right, I've got my properties up. Um, now we want to click filters on the properties panel to display the filters area. So I'm looking at my properties panel and here's my filters. Right now I've got no filters, okay. I want to click the add filter icon that looks like, let me see if I can find this right down here. Oop, you can't even see it. So let me um, resize that a little bit so you can actually see the add filters icon here. So. If I'm here and I scroll to the bottom, this is the add filters icon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click my add filter and then I want to choose, I want to click drop shadow. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a filter called drop shadow. It says point to the number for the angle. Then when the pointer changes to a double headed arrow, so I want to go to where it says angle. And any time that you see items like this where you have that double headed arrow, that allows you to actually change those values. So I want to change these values to 100 degrees. So I'm moving it over to the side. And there's my 100 degree. I want to click frame one to select it. Then play the movie. Okay, so in our particular case, um, now I want to go ahead and play it. And there's my drop shadow. Do you see how it's different? Now I have a drop shadow. It has that extra element behind it, so I've added that to it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click my frame one, and then I'm going to click my circle object again. So I make sure that my circles, oh, there we go. Now I make sure my circles are up right here. And then I want to click my drop shadow in the filters area. And then we want to click delete filter. So I want to click my drop shadow. You'll notice as I select my drop shadow here, if I look down at the bottom, you'll see a little uh, recycle bin or a delete recycle bin. Whew, date myself. Anyway, you'll see my delete filter, my trash can right there. And I can delete it. Now if we actually play it, there is no drop shadow, which is pretty awesome. All right. So. And we're going to add a bevel this go round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my add um, filter and I'm going to choose bevel. And for bevel, now what we're going to do is we're going to test the movie, run it, and check that out. So now it's when it's kind of a it's kind of off center. I don't have a drop shadow anymore, and I can actually add multiples if I wanted to. So if I wanted to do this and I want to add a drop shadow as well, you'll notice now I have two things. I have a bevel and a drop shadow and I'm feeling very, very, very special. All right, so the next thing we want to do as it appears in Flash 1-28 is we want to add some motion presets and do some extra special things with this. So we're going to verify the playhead is on frame one, so we want to put it on frame one, and then I want to click Windows, and I want to click Motion, Motion Presets, so I want to go down here, and it says click window menu bar then click motion presets so i click my motion presets after i do my motion presets i want to drag the motion presets panel or the panel set so as i look right here alrighty so we are working on motion presets so i want to do windows motion presets i am on a flash 1-28 on uh, number two now what I want to do is I want to drag the motion presets panel or the panel set by its title bar to the right side so it does not obscure the stage. So basically get it out of your way 
so you know what heck's going on. So I can actually put it over here, kind of out of the way. Um, then what I want to do is I want to, <laughs> for the default presets, so we want to expand the default presets. And once again, I'm making sure that I've clicked on that bad boy. And I want to click Bounce Smoosh, which is this one right here. And this is, gives you an idea of what is going on with this animation, right? And we want to click Apply. So what I'm doing, do you want to replace a current motion object with a new selection? Yes, I do. So what I've done is I've used this particular motion object, and I've replaced the motion I already have with this new one. Now what I can do, since it's right smack dab in the middle, I can actually take it, grab it, move it over, it's still going to have the motion. Now notice I've changed my motion path, which is great. Um, so now I can modify where my motion path goes. I can choose the direction, and you'll notice I have this one thing so I can modify how it's actually going to run across, which is pretty neat. Now I've already applied it. I've done yes. I want to view on the menu bar and point to magnification and then click 50%. So I want to view magnification 50%. And all this is doing is giving me a better idea of what this actually looks like, which is awesome. I'm going to click frame one. So I'm going to click frame one. There's my frame one. And I want to draw a marquee, which I've already done. Press the up arrow key and keyboard to move the circle object path towards the top of the stage. So in this particular case, if I want to I have it clicked and I could actually move it around with my arrow keys is basically what they're saying on 1-29 number 11 now your motion path will look different than my motion path but it'll give you a general idea of how it works obviously my motion path is a little bit more um, bouncy if I so choose now I put it back there I can actually grab the end of it modify it you know change it around whatever I need now I can actually play the movie and bing, bing, yeah, that's really cool. So that's my entire motion path, and I can pause it as I need it. Um, scroll this, all right, so we played the movie, and now we're going to go ahead and save it. So I'm going to do a save, and now I've actually completed my movie itself. So if you have any particular questions, this concludes lesson three of the overall lessons involving chapter one.